the location and depth of the quake weren't the only factors making this the biggest urban disaster ever. The main reason there were so many casualties was because building quality, lack of infrastructure and widespread poverty meant most Haitians were extremely vulnerable to the damage that an earthquake could do. The problem with Haitian housing and infrastructure is that it was so poor quality even before the earthquake that none of the construction was able to withstand a shock that huge, you know. It was underserviced in terms of, of water, electricity, roads, and also the building techniques were not really fit for um, earthquakes. But one of the reasons that the buildings are such poor quality is that there simply aren't the resources to build better ones. Even before the quake, Haiti was amongst the poorest nations in the world. And that's another reason it was so badly affected. Drive round the streets of Port-au-Prince and it won't take you long to realise that you're in one of the poorest countries in the world. Even before the quake, two-thirds of Haiti's population was under or unemployed and half the people lived below the poverty line. And that meant when the quake struck, they had little or no resources to help them through the crisis. Alors, la situation des tremblements de terre a renforcé davantage eh, la crise économique au niveau au niveau d'Haïti, de sorte que en circulant dans les camps, quand les camps existaient encore un grand nombre, quand Oxfam travaille encore dans les camps, facilement on trouvait des familles qui étaient des locataires. Ils vivaient très difficilement pour, pour euh, arriver à payer, à payer les, les, les loyers. Ils avaient des difficultés à envoyer les enfants à l'école. Ils avaient des difficultés de se trouver même à manger. Et voilà que les tremblements de terre arrivent et, et ils arrivent à, à ravir tout ce qu'ils possédaient comme bien, alors se retrouver à zéro. But it's not just ordinary people who lacked resources to deal with the quake. Keep driving around the city and you'll see a lot of the roads don't have tarmac. They're just rough tracks. Most of the time, there's sewage lying around too. Every few minutes, you'll come across a truck carrying drinking water. It's because there's no piped supply network. The government has so little money, there are few services supplying water, electricity or transport here. What we call infrastructure. What infrastructure there is is in a very poor state of repair. Haiti's emergency services are also poorly equipped, and in the aftermath of the quake, it was extremely difficult for them to move around. But lack of government resources isn't just a recent phenomena. For over 300 years, Haiti's been ruled by a succession of colonial powers, brutal dictators and military regimes. This statue commemorates Toussaint Louverture, a slave leader who helped Haiti gain independence after 200 years of French rule, when half a million slaves produced sugarcane, tobacco and other products for export to Europe. Today, few of the colonial buildings remain, but the economic impacts are still very present. Despite gaining independence from the French in 1804, the Haitian government was forced to pay 90 million gold francs in compensation. It took until 1947 to clear the debt, and it's meant there's been little or no money to develop the country's own infrastructure and economy. Today, the largest sector of Haiti's economy is money sent by relatives who've emigrated to find work. And the combination of a lack of government resources and poverty means recovery is a very slow process. <laughs>